Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question about the standard model, including the difference between baryons and mesons, why quarks and leptons are fundamental particles, and how charged particles can be accelerated and deflected in particle accelerators. Here's a question from the 2014 revised higher paper. Physicists study subatomic particles using particle accelerators. The pions are subatomic particles made up of two quarks. There are three types of pion. Pi plus particles, which have a charge of plus one. Pi minus particles, which have a charge of negative one. And pi naught particles, which have a zero charge. The pi plus particle is made up of an up quark and an anti-down quark. Part one then asks, is a pion classed as a baryon or a meson? Justify your answer. So the important line in the question is this one, stating that pions are made up of two quarks. That means that a pion is a meson. Some examples of mesons are the K+, plus, which consists of a down quark and an anti-strange quark, and the pi plus, which as we've heard, consists of an up quark and an anti-down quark. Now don't panic, we don't actually have to remember the combination of quarks which make up these particles. We do, however, need to know that mesons are hadrons because they're made up of quarks. The other type of hadron is the baryon. These contain three quarks, and some examples are the proton with two up quarks and a down quark, and the neutron with two down quarks and an up quark. From this, you should see that baryons and mesons are not fundamental particles. Fundamental particles have no internal structure. Examples of fundamental particles are quarks and leptons, such as the electron. Here's part two of the question. The charge on an up quark is plus two thirds. Determine the charge on an anti-down quark. Now remember that we're told that the pi plus particle has a charge of plus one, and that's made up of an up quark and an anti-down quark. That means that the charge on the up quark and the charge on the anti-down quark must add up to one like this. So the charge on the anti-down quark is just one minus the charge on the up quark, which gives us plus one third. Part three says, the pi minus particle is the antiparticle of the pi plus particle. State the names of the quarks that make up a pi minus particle. This is a nice easy question. Now remember that the pi plus particle is made up of an up quark and an anti-down quark. This means then that its antiparticle, the pi minus particle, is made up of an anti-up quark and a down quark. A particle and its antiparticle have the same mass but opposite charge. Here's A part 4. Pi plus particles have a mean lifetime of 2.6 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds in their own frame of reference. In an experiment in a particle accelerator, pi plus particles are accelerated to a velocity of 0.9 c. That's 0.9 times the speed of light. Calculate the mean lifetime of these pi plus particles relative to a stationary observer. So, if we give ourselves more space to work, hopefully you'll realise that we're using this equation. T dash is equal to T divided by the square root of 1 minus V over C squared, where T dash is the dilated time and T is known as the proper time. The time of 2.6 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds is the proper time T, since it's measured in the same reference frame as the pi plus particles. The stationary observer is in a different reference frame, so it would measure a greater or dilated time T dash. Substituting into our equation, we get this. 2.6 times 10 to the negative 8 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0 0.9 squared, which works out to be 5.96 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds, or using the correct number of significant figures, 6.0 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds. In part B, we're asked to explain how particle accelerators, such as the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, are able to 1. accelerate charged particles, and 2. deflect charged particles. Answering part one, charged particles accelerate in electric fields. Here we can see a positively charged particle, which, when released, accelerates towards the negative terminal. The blue arrow represents the particle's velocity vector. For part two, magnetic fields are used to deflect charged particles. The blue arrow represents the velocity vector of the particle, which is again positively charged. And the green arrow indicates the direction of the force experienced by the particle. With the magnetic field into the paper, as indicated, the positively charged particle would move in a circle in an anti-clockwise direction. So, that's the end of the question. 
look out for the video lesson on the standard model when it comes out. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.